Hello, Cinema Therapy, or whoever is actually watching this video. My name is Brent Newhall. I've been an anime fan for about 20 years now, and the Cinema Therapy YouTube channel has recently been doing a series of videos on Hayao Miyazaki's movies, My Name is Totoro and Spirited Away. I thought this would be a great time to talk about Hayao Miyazaki's movie career and different movies he's made that might be more or less interesting for a channel like that to cover, providing some context to how Miyazaki's kind of approach to storytelling has changed over time. So hopefully this will be helpful. So let me present da, 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 the Hayao Miyazaki movie Matrix. This is my chart of Hayao Miyazaki's movies over time, plotted on two axes. So going bottom to top are the demographic of those movies, preteen, teen, young adult, and adult. And then the columns are for different phases of Hayao Miyazaki's career. He's kind of early career, 70s and 80s, mid-career into the 90s, and then late career in the 2000s, 2010s. Now, this is important because Hayao Miyazaki's filmmaking and storytelling approaches, I think, shifted significantly in each of these phases. So let's talk about that. In his early career, his films were mostly adventure stories. Cagliostro, Nausicaa, Castle in the Sky, these are basically adventure stories. There's a very clear through line of action. Characters are motivated very clearly. You understand why characters are doing what they're doing very, very clearly. The one exception here would be Totoro, which is less of an adventure film. But then Miyazaki was explicitly trying to make a more calm, quiet movie in contrast to a lot of the kind of spastic action adventure kids movies of the time. But even there, again, motivation of characters in Totoro and the others, very, very clear. And that really is something that you see even in Miyazaki's earlier works when he was working at Toy and the various movies he was working on tended to be clear action movies. You move into his mid-career and that starts transitioning. You start seeing a change to movies with a bit more ambiguity in them. You see this in Tiki's delivery service a little bit in that Kiki is moving into this new place and it's a place that doesn't care about her in, in a way. And so what she has to do is unclear. She has to kind of navigate this new environment without knowing a lot of the rules of that environment. Porco Rosso has a very conflicted main character. He knows he he has the power to do good, but he just kind of can't bring himself to do so. He could be a hero, but he just would prefer to lay on the beach. And then Princess Mononoke, obviously, is the, for those who've seen it, is the ultimate version of this. Every faction in Princess Mononoke has its own way of seeing things, its own good points and bad points. There are no good factions or evil factions in Princess Mononoke, arguably. And so there is much stronger ambiguity in this movie as to who is right or wrong. Makes for a very interesting movie, but also a lot more layers than an adventure film like the Castle Cagliostro. Then we move into Miyazaki's later career, and we start seeing what I call obscurism. It's maybe not the perfect term for this, but these films to me are markedly different. Miyazaki's working partner, Isa Takahara, was well known for making movies in which there are things happening behind the scenes that aren't exactly explained to the audience, but you're supposed to pick up on through context clues, through the fact that there is a butterfly in this scene, and that is symbolic of something. The fact that this particular book is laid out, that is indicative of something. All of those sorts of things, very subtle. Miyazaki picked up on that in his late career, and so in his later films, characters can be motivated by background elements that are never explained in the film. In contrast to Miyazaki's earlier movies where there would certainly be stuff going on behind the scenes that were not explained, but those generally weren't motivators for the characters in the moment. You could still understand what they were doing. A few of their reactions might be a little odd here and there until you understood, oh, there's this whole backstory going on. But in general, much more clear through line for the characters. In his later movies, 
it's often not clear why people are doing what they're doing. You see that in House Moving Castle in particular, even Spirited Away. What are Yubaba's powers exactly? What is she doing here? Why can she do these things? You're just expected to accept these things in the movie. Now, there are positives and negatives to this. I'm not saying that Miyazaki's early movies were great and his later movies were terrible. I'm saying that this is a different approach to storytelling and that it has different effects. You can have a story that is very clear and that has fewer layers in it. You can have a movie that has much more layers but is a little harder to follow and harder to understand. There may be a lot more to kind of get into there, but there's a greater chance that a significant number of people are going to bounce off it and not understand it because a lot of the context is either not there or very, very difficult to grasp. If we're looking for specific sort of recommendations from each of these time periods, well, Cinema Therapy has already done My Neighbor Totoro. I would probably go with Castle in the Sky next because that is a, again, more of an adventure movie. There is some behind the scenes things that are kind of explained as the movie goes along, but it keeps those things hidden for a while to kind of keep you guessing. If we then move on to his mid-career, again, I think Princess Mononoke is the standout here. Many, many layers, very complex, and I think this strikes an excellent balance between his early career and late career. In Mononoke, you clearly understand why characters are doing what they're doing, but the more you delve into the different things going on, societies, potential, you know, hinted at backstories, the more you realize, oh, okay, that adds another layer of meaning to what characters are doing. And then in his more recent films, I would probably look at The Wind Rises, simply because it is a movie certainly aimed at adults, and it is a mashup, actually, of history and a very famous short novel. So you see many different things being worked on at once in this movie, and I think it's a little easier to understand what's going on in that movie, but there's still a lot of layers to kind of unpack. And to illustrate the difficulty of all of this, I will end with paraphrasing a quote by Hayao Miyazaki. He wrote an article on why he doesn't make adventure movies anymore, and he stated, the problem is, if you want to make an adventure movie, you either spend half the movie setting up who the villains are, what they are, why they're doing what they're doing, what they're trying to get, their motivations, etc., or you make them Nazis. And that is just kind of the, the difficulty. <laughs> Hope you found this helpful. Thank you for watching.